And I think we can probably kick things off. Um, I'm sure Nolan will probably pop in at some point. Um, and we got a lot to talk about today. I'm sure everyone has some really interesting things to add to this conversation. Um, so welcome everyone. We're doing good. We're an NFT ecosystem that's going to be launching in just a couple of weeks. And we are focused on inspiring creativity and nurturing uh, positive social impact. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, we do have a really awesome exhibition going on right now. Uh, we're going to be curating the first users on our platform uh, when we launch. So be sure to check out the Doing Good Origins exhibition. It's on our page. Um, take a look, submit some art. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. And we appreciate all your love and support. Um, you're going to also win some pretty cool prizes if you get selected. So take a look, read more. And we're excited to kick off this conversation today. Um, focused on art creators in the NFT space. Um, I'm happy that Nolan just popped in too. What's up, Nolan? Welcome. You're just in time. And yeah, let's start off with maybe having each of the creators on stage just give like a quick intro, talk about them, their art, their NFT experience, uh, starting with Jack. You want to kick us off? Yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, my name's Jack. Uh, I'm an 18 year old digital artist. My art primarily focuses on uh, like 3D art and 3D animation. I started my experience in the creative industry in around 2014. Uh, that started with uh, just doing stuff. I did like content creation on YouTube and stuff related to uh, like gaming content and just through the need uh, to create like my own branding and et cetera. I uh, learned to use like some of the Adobe programs and through there, uh, I explored other programs like uh, Cinema 4D, a 3D program. Uh, and after just like a couple years, uh, I just re really started to like it. Um, yeah, at the time it was a hobby. Uh, after that, it after a couple years, it became more uh, of something like I realized there was, uh, you know, in need of people for uh, like branding and graphic design. Uh, so in the past, a lot of my work was focused more on like utility and providing value for uh, like a client or uh, yeah, yeah, anyone like that. Uh, but within like the past six, seven months, uh, I learned about NFTs uh, through one of my friends and I, I, was, I was really overwhelmed to be honest at first, uh, like with the whole space, but the uh, Really, I, the main thing that drew me in, the community, <laughs> you know, it's, I'm sure all of you guys have noticed it, but the community here, it's absolutely incredible. Um, there were so many new people I met and so many new friendships that, uh, you know, that uh, were created through this space. And yeah, I was just really over overwhelmed with like the support from other creators, collectors, and everyone else. And I was also really attracted to how it uh, ties in uh, the community between uh, creators and collectors. And for example, like Twitter, uh, it really gives everybody a space to interact and communicate on. Uh, so my NFTs uh, focus on, uh, I like to focus on two aspects both uh the visual um yeah the visual and aesthetic aspect of it so I, I guess you could generalize that by saying you know just maybe how good something looks but also focusing on uh the the actual work that goes into the piece so uh like i've minted a couple nfts uh in the past but right now my work is focused on really showing the beauty of the image but also the um All right, so maybe you want to pick up where you left off, Jack. All right, yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I think where I left off at, uh, I was, uh, so my work uh, and the future NFTs that I plan to mint, uh, I really like to focus on the actual, like, uh, visual aspect. Uh, not only that, but also uh, showing the actual work that went into the piece. Uh, for example, um, if you guys are familiar with him, um, Cornelius Damrich, or he goes by like Planet Zomax, um, he's 
been my biggest inspiration throughout my career. If you've seen his work, you just you just know it's you can you can look at it and it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, one of my favorite pieces by him is 6088 AD. It's a piece that took him almost 10 months to complete. And if you look at it, you can kind of tell. Uh, but he, he his work really just amazed me. It was so incredible. And the visual detail that went into there and, you know, all the tiny elements uh, in the 3D scene, it, it just astonished me. And he's really been my biggest inspiration. And it played a really big uh, – yeah, it's has it, – it has had a really big effect on my work. Uh, yeah, like for the pieces that I'm looking at creating now, many of them, um, they take around, I'd say, one uh, to three months uh, to complete. Uh, and those are all 3D pieces uh, because he just really inspired uh, my workflow and uh, the detail that I actually put into my pieces. So. Amazing. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate you sharing. Helga, would you like to give us a, a quick intro to who you are and your art? Uh, hi, everyone again. My name is Helga, and uh, this is the first time for me that I'm doing Twitter spaces as a speaker. So it feels very, uh, very different to Instagram because there are no video, it's just audio. And uh, yeah, it feels a bit weird. Um, so where it all started for me, I think it started in February, so I was a bit late to the game. Um, and me and a few other artists were exploring the topic of NFTs and we, we found out that there was a lot of controversy around NFTs in general. And, you know, particularly about the environmental impact and so on. And we thought, um, so we thought that, you know, NFTs, um, NFT is such an amazing uh, space and we thought that it could definitely be used for good um, and you know uh, we started um, thinking what we could do and this was when we came up with this NFT for the planet idea um, which uh, was all about joining effort with other artists uh, and not necessarily big ones who could afford to contribute millions towards um, environmental issues or, you know, charities of their choices. Uh, but it was all about um, joining effort with smaller artists like ourselves um, who would rely on NFT um, income and who wouldn't be able to donate full amount, uh, but who would still be very willing to do something to help either the planet or, you know, uh, the charities that um, they care about. And um, because uh, in the, the, the World Environment Day was just around the corner, we thought it would, it, it would be great to do a drop on that particular day. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do a drop per se, because as you probably know, uh, drops are very limited now, but we managed to get a feature on Makerspace, um, and uh, all together, I think we donated uh, more than a thousand dollars to Trees for the Future, which is an amazing charity planting trees in Africa um, and fighting deforestation. So um, this is what my journey on NFT has been so far. And um, at the moment, we are still exploring, and uh, I'm still exploring other platforms. And uh, yeah, I'm very hopeful that uh, doing good will make an amazing impact on the environment and on the world in general, because I think it's a great initiative. And also, it seems like what you guys are doing is going to make it really easy for people to donate and this is what we were concerned about in the first place we wanted to make it really first of all really transparent and also very easy to contribute towards the courses dear fellow hearts amazing thank you so much for sharing helga and um yeah it was it was great to connect with you when you were just entering into the space for your for your fundraiser that you guys were doing um, your collaborative project was really, really awesome. 
Um, and if I wasn't working full time on doing good at the time, I definitely would have loved to have participated. Um, let's move on to Nolan. Got something to say? Yeah. Hey, um, I'm Nolan. And uh, right now I work with a group called Wasted Potential. And we do visuals for artists to use at performances. And I work on music videos sometimes. Um, but for NFTs, I work on my more personal art style. Um, that's why I like NFTs so much because I've been able to just actually be able to make money from my, you know, like my personal artwork, which isn't something I've been able to do before. I've had to always do different stuff for an income as an artist. And so, yeah, uh, just right now, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Awesome, man. And can you tell us a little bit more about your aesthetic, your work? I know you've been crushing it on your NFT stuff recently. Um, so I'd love to know like what inspires you um, and what stuff that is exciting you about the NFT space right now, if I can put you on the spot. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I really like to make kind of like dark artwork. Um, I like my doing jewelry design. Um, I really like ornamental designs. Um, I li like I live uh, I live in an old church, and there's a lot of like religious artwork around, and you know like really fancy ornaments. And so every day I just kind of see that stuff, and it's the kind of stuff that I want to make. So I have a good amount of inspiration for it every day, and um, I would say that like going forward in the nft space i'm just trying to get on i guess as many platforms as i can you know it's good to have a a good you know broad spectrum of places you can post your art and um yeah i, I would say that's it for right now amazing man thank you for sharing um and i know jeff uh, is also one of our speakers today. I think he's in the audience right now, um, but he'll join back and tell us a little bit about his work uh, once he can come back up to the speaker stage. Um, and in the meantime, I would love to move the conversation a little bit more towards the current landscape. Um, you know, a lot of, oh, oh, there he is. Okay, hey, Jeff, <laughs> want to talk to us about your art? Yeah, sorry about that. I got um, disconnected. But, good. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, thanks for having this space. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, thanks for everything you're doing with the platform. I love it. So I um, a, I'm a, a social media, um, you know, evangelist, so to speak, because I really do believe in the power of social media to, to transform society is such a powerful tool. Um, I mean, this, this whole experience is an example of that, um, but it, it can also be a double-edged double sword as with any type of technology, right? And so um, my background is in filmmaking and I really wanted to just use that to um, kind of help tell the stories of our age and help try to usher in a, a new era and kind of spark a movement for um, drafting new liberties, uh, digital liberties, possibly even a declaration of digital independence, uh, maybe have a, a virtual constitutional convention and really as a society come together and decide what kind of protections and protocols and forms are being built out to really uh, ensure, you know, the types of freedoms that creators and everyone everyone needs um, in different aspects for their lives. So um, I started out doing uh, filmmaking in Austin as a citizen journalist. Um, so I have about, you know, decades worth of uh, footage from different uh, social justice movements, people involved in the struggle, really just a fact-finding mission on, on my um, part because I just saw it was very difficult to understand, like, what is the real truth um because I, I was looking at a lot of the, the the corporate media structures um through paid advertisement and the filter 
bubble and everything. And that, so that's sort of the inspiration behind um, really deep doing a deep dive on um, on my first uh, NFT Genesis projects with uh, with Ava's story of you know self discovery and um, using technology to become self sovereign with crypto keys and uh you know help form a, a decentralized social media network and i think we're just at the beginning of those stages so that's why i wanted to to create this platform uh kind of a, a metaverse space for people to um learn the, the fundamental liberties that we should have as as we're building out these uh metaverses and so that's kind of in a, in a nutshell um where i'm at and uh, I just posted a behind the scenes process for the, for the color grading that I did on that, on that story. It's called beyond here. Um, and then I also have these uh, freedom flowers that are, that are part of that experience in the metaverse walled garden. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing Jeff. And uh, to anyone who hasn't seen some of the stuff Jeff's doing, he has some really cool stuff on his link tree. Um, on his Twitter profile. So definitely recommend checking out his his metaverse project he's working on. Um, and so with that, I would love to continue the conversation. You know, I think both uh, Helga and Nolan brought up some interesting points. Helga mentioning that it's it's difficult for creators in this space to get drops when they want them. And Nolan bringing up a point that, you know, a lot of creators are just trying to get on as many platforms as possible. Um, and I think what we're seeing is there's there's still a lot of gatekeeping in this space. Um, and it's not to say that it's in some respect, it's it's necessary to maintain the quality of the experience these platforms are trying to curate. Um, but on the other hand, you know, what is what is stuff that we can do as creators and encourage platforms to do to open up the space and make it more accessible to other people? How do we educate? and bring you know what nfts can bring and afford and and do to uplift creators and support them um, to more people um so i'm curious you know maybe one at a time if you guys want to offer up some insight um what can we do to to help encourage platforms to nurture creators like to foster this creativity to open up the space and make education and like accessibility more open um, and how can we do that in a way that also maintains um, curation integrity um, and creative integrity? You know, I think there's a lot of these barriers in place to actually protect collectors and protect creators just as much um, as it keeps people out. Um, so maybe Helga, if you want to offer up some of your insight and then we'll go to Jack. Um, thanks, Howard. Uh, yes, it was quite tricky for us to get even a feature and not to mention a drop because it looks like um, all platforms are oversubscribed and they have their drops planned months in advance. Uh, so getting a place, getting a drop um, is really challenging. But having said that, uh, we also felt that um, the platforms were really keen to hear about our initiative. And if we were not, uh, aiming for the World Environment Environment Day, we may have got um, a drop. I'm thinking it's just that the timing for us was really tight because we were working towards a specific date that you know the the platform makers place simply couldn't fit us um, into the schedule. But what I'm trying to say is that if there is something you're very passionate about and if you can gather other artists um, around your passion. I'm pretty sure that it is possible to uh, get some attention from the platforms. And uh, we contacted uh, Super Air, we contacted uh, Nifty directly, and uh, we did get responses from them, even though they were not always positive, but at least we could, we, we could feel that we were heard and um, the platforms uh, also were also keen to get 
um, they, uh, to get different artists. It's just that simply uh, it wasn't the right moment. And I'm also now thinking that if I were to do that again, I would allow myself more time, uh, probably not months in advance, but at least a good few weeks so that they can um, get something scheduled. This is my experience. And yes, it's always it's always good to get like-minded people together uh, because everyone has their own ideas. And I think we had a fantastic um, group on Twitter um, and we did support each other a lot during, um, during that uh, period of preparation for the future. And uh, in, in general, I think it's been a fantastic experience and we learned a lot from it. Amazing. Thank you for sharing, Helga. Uh, Jack, you got some stuff to add? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, um, I, I think it's somewhat of a difficult um, problem, I'd say, to really approach because... Uh, well, just recently, uh, I've really started exploring more um, like galleries and uh, other platforms, to, uh, some some of the lesser known ones uh, specifically that I'm referring to, uh, to show off artist work besides, you know, some of the really large ones that everyone knows about, like, you know, Foundation, Super Air, Maker's Place, etc. But uh, I've really started to explore some of the smaller ones. And uh, it's really, it's it's interesting to see because... You know, I, I guess it's, there's just, they're smaller, so I guess uh, there's uh, not as many people, um, like, all trying to get into it, uh, get into the platform at the same time. So, uh, like, some specifically, I'm referring to some of those platforms um, you, uh, talking about their motive uh, and, you know, why they exist. Uh, I feel like a lot of those uh, are, like, really trying to, support the idea of you know making the platform accessible to all artists because i think what we've seen from uh probably since you know like since march uh and a little bit after that you know uh a lot of pro a lot of platforms you know there is gatekeeping and there is uh, an issue of trying to make it accessible to all artists but still keep the work curated um and yeah i i think that's uh problem that might take uh, a little bit longer for uh, different platforms to really address and really make a scalable impact throughout the community upon. Uh, so I, th I think it's really interesting. And uh, specifically, um, I'm working for a, a protocol called Genie. And uh, basically, uh, we, uh, we're building a financial infra infrastructure protocol uh, and building uh, primitives for the NFT ecosystem. And we want to empower creators, collectors, and enthusiasts uh, through the products that we provide, uh, just through innovation uh, and a more capital efficient way to reduce their opportunity cost. And uh, that's just through one of our products uh, we have launching pretty soon. But in the future, uh, I really hope to uh, I really hope to aim to, well, not, not necessarily um, create a platform to, for artists to sell their work on, um, but I, I would like to take upon a role to really show off and get more creators out there because I think there's two ways that, uh, uh, that the problem can be addressed, not only through the platforms that the work is actually going on, but, uh, you know, through more uh, accounts like Twitter accounts uh, and, yeah, uh, things like that, uh, more people really trying to show off artists' work and get the – and help smaller artists get their work out there because, uh, you know, for example, uh, a lot of these platforms, people, they have to, like, wait months on – uh, if they apply to them, you know, to hear back, uh, you know, I mean, most of the time you don't hear back if you apply to them. Uh, it kind of just goes unnoticed or uh, unheard from, I mean. But uh, specifically uh, myself and my role um, with Genie, I really hope to uh, address the issue by not by if not necessarily creating a platform to sell NFTs on but to really uh, show off and, you know, overall just build the community 
uh, and cr make it even stronger than what it is now. Because like I said, uh, when I was kind of introducing myself, the first thing I noticed was how supportive the community was and kind of how like tight knit it was between everybody, uh, both creators and collectors. And I feel uh, what would really benefit artists would be something to really help show off artists' work uh, more so than what's being done now because we've seen large platforms uh, go off and say they really want to support uh, small artists and you know get their work out there. But I feel uh, some of them, they really haven't addressed that problem adequately. And uh, I... I, I, I can't speak on it, uh, speak on specifically this, um, uh, like exactly, I mean, but uh, I, I can't say whether it is uh, they don't have the resources to do it, whether um, it's just, it's a, you know, we're in a new space and whether it's uh, like, a, it's a really broad problem to address and whether they just can't do it at the moment. But uh, many of them, like I said, uh, they say they aim to support and uh, highlight some of the smaller artists. I really don't feel a lot of platforms have been able to do that successfully. And uh, like what I've seen is uh, platforms say that and then they go and they plan big drops with uh, people outside of the space, um, like magazine uh, or like writing companies, uh, and, you know, just more spaces outside of necessarily the creative and NFT industry. And I feel like a lot of uh, some of these platforms highlighted that over the work of the actual hardworking and smaller artists who deserve and also need that exposure as they're entering the space. So, like I said, I'm not sure if, you know, it's just too broad of a problem to uh, have a solution to it at this moment or whether um, it's the motives for some of these platforms. But I feel like uh, if there's something out there uh, specifically focused to support and highlight smaller artists, uh, I think that would really be beneficial and do a good job of helping solve that issue. It's a really broad topic uh, to discuss, and I think there's a lot of different levels to it. So I... Uh, yeah, so I, I hope this was a pretty good answer. Yeah, that was excellent. Thank you, Jack, for sharing. Um, Nolan, I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, he he pretty much said a lot of what I was going to say. I think that one of the biggest problems is just kind of like gatekeeping from certain platforms. And, um, you know, I've I've noticed that, like, for some of these bigger platforms like super rare or nifty they they claim that they want to help smaller artists but then you know they don't <laughs> and they just have like celebrities come and do drops and so it's been like kind of hard for people who don't have much of a following to kind of like get into these like platforms that would benefit them um and so, like, that's why I'm looking at al alternative platforms, ones that are maybe not as heard of and, like, giving them a chance. And I I think that for everyone, <clears throat> sorry, if, uh, if there was more of an incentive to help people who don't have much of a following but are very serious about this space and put a lot of hard work into it, because I think it, I think it discourages a lot of people when they put their art out there and it doesn't get as many views as it should and nobody's interested in buying it. And then, you know, you see the same like group of like 30 people getting like, you know, nonstop bids of like 30 ETH and like yours can't even get one ETH. And it's like, it can be really discouraging. And I've seen a lot of people quit like this space over it so i don't know i guess like what i would like to see is making it a little bit more helpful to people who are either new or just don't have a huge following yeah a hundred percent man um i have i have some thoughts on this so I'll, I'll share after jeff i'll let jeff go first okay yeah so that's 
that's just a very um, difficult problem to solve in general, right? Um, but I think that what I've seen work really well is just having these more peer-to-peer community or uh, community-led types of projects. Like, um, like I want to give a shout out to Cass, who's um, a beautiful example of this DAO. You know, like she's in this DAO stratosphere uh, project where um, you have 500 artists, um, you know, being featured in China and then also in the metaverse. And this is just a, a, an incredible example of how artists um, who have been, you know, pretty successful in this space, kind of paying it forward. And I think it's going to take more initiatives like that to really see an acceleration of uh, fixing this type of issue. But um, maybe like one of the ideas could be, you know, maybe there's a platform out there that's emerging and, and kind of facilitating that through different tools, um, uh, kind of creating mechanisms, like maybe even tokens or something, so that uh, some of the more successful artists uh, will be kind of rewarded or um, incentivized to, to do that, to kind of, you know, pass it on, share the light, and, uh, you know, uplift some of the other artists that are just starting out. And then, you know, maybe those tokens could be used for um, educational classes, uh, maybe learning art history, different techniques, maybe one-on-one sessions with some accomplished artists and things like that would, would really be beautiful to see in the space. Yeah, I I 100% agree with all the stuff you guys are saying. Uh, as a creator <laughs> who was doing NFTs for quite a while, um, and as one who hopes to do them again, I think, you know, I think any if there's anything I've learned the last few months, it's that everyone has an answer to their to this problem, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right answer, the wrong answer. You know, I I used to really resent a lot of the gatekeepers to a lot of the platforms, um, but when being on the opposite end, and now approaching this from the doing good standpoint and trying to think of ways for us to be inclusive but also maintain quality. Um, it's really, really hard. <laughs> it's, it's really difficult and complicated. And I totally feel for a lot of the, the people who have been gatekeeping in this sort of sense. Um, and I guess to, to kind of approach that from a different angle, at least the things that we're thinking about is how do we maintain uh, this accessibility and openness for people, um, but also build out for the long term uh, to focus on true community ownership rather than being community centric because they're they're very different things. There needs to be a very clear distinction between them. And I think a lot of people um, and and ecosystems are touting the community centric uh, you know narrative, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean any that that it's going to be community owned, um, which is the only way to really be, community governed and dictated and curated by the community. Um, so at least the way we're trying to approach this, and it's it's a bit different than anything that's probably been out there or seen, um, is we're actually going to have many galleries in our ecosystem that curate their own drops. Um, and anyone in the community will be able to open a gallery, granted they have tokens uh, that participate in our DAO governance, and basically unlock features to either host their own drops as an individual curator, as a community that is a DAO maybe, and they wanna come in and curate their own community's drops. And basically as a whole, the entire ecosystem will vote on who is going to be featured. Um, So if doing good drops are really cool and people love that we're focused on art and social impact, then the community will vote and our visibility will be based on the community votes. Um, If let's say, you know, Nolan comes in and wants to open this thick, badass art collective gallery um, and basically do a bunch of drops with these dope motion motion graphics artists um, and people like them better than stuff that Doing Good's putting out, then they're the ones who are going to be featured. Um, so I guess it's just a very <laughs> different approach. And again, we're we're human. We're all just trying to come up with different solutions to this problem um, and trying to make it accessible to everyone. Um, but like with everyone else, you know, you have to start somewhere and this is something we really strive to do, at least within the first three months, uh, that we're live. 
Um, so hopefully it, it provides a template and a model and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, but I think we'll, we'll hopefully see how things go uh, pretty soon after at least doing goods live. And so the next thing I would love to talk about, I noticed we might have lost Helga. She's in the crowd now, um, but maybe she also just wants to listen for a little bit. So that's cool. Um, the next thing I would love to ask you guys about is what has been the one thing that you really wish was easier um, in this space or that would make your lives as creators um, a lot simpler? Um, obviously, crypto and blockchain stuff, while it touts to be super like super easy and simple, uh, there's a really a lot of complexity to it, even the simple MetaMask stuff and like getting your money into the ecosystem and plugging into different exchanges. And that's all before the DeFi and the DAOs and the governance and the tokens and all that fun stuff. So I would love to hear from from maybe Jack first. Um, what has been your experience and what do you wish was easier in this space so that you had more time to focus on your art? Uh, I'd actually like to sit on it for a minute and, you know, really give my answer. Um, so if you uh, might want to get to someone else really quickly. Yeah, of course. Maybe let's go backwards and we'll start with Jeff. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, one thing I wanted to make sure was that when we hear from Helga, if um can, like, find a way to turn her mic up. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, maybe we could hear from Helga first because I, I have to think about that too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I was lucky here because my husband is really into um, Bitcoin, Ethereum and uh, cryptocurrency in general. So he helped me a lot with setting up the wallet and uh, he also explained to me how things work, etc., etc. So um apologies guys i'm not going to be very helpful here but what i wanted to add is that i think the benefit of selling on makerspace for me for example was that um the person who bought my art in the end was able to purchase it uh with us dollars so they didn't have to have um, um an ethereum account and i think it's a huge benefit um, for those artists who want to sell to general public and not just to NFT collectors, because the person who bought the um, the person who purchased my art uh, was actually one of my Instagram fans, and it is important to know um, for those artists who have Instagram following because not everyone on Instagram is familiar with um, NFT space and has. Um, a crypto wallet or Ethereum wallet. Uh, so yeah, this is, I thought, was a great benefit of Maker Space as a platform. Amazing. Thank you for sharing, Helga. And I, I noticed we have Nosy up here as well. Maybe Nosy, do you want to add something to this conversation? Hello. Yes, Nosy from Los Angeles, California here. Uh, I was going to add to the previous topic, but um, uh, I don't have much insight on this current one, but maybe uh, I'll take a stab at it. Um, repeat the question. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, of course. Um, what are some things you wish were easier in this space so that you could have more time focusing on your art? Oh, okay, cool. That's a good one. Um, I come from uh, a film and uh, broadcast kind of uh, uh, market where um, I, I'm a creative director and director. So I, I always had kind of a salesperson putting up my work in front of people. Uh, they put, you know, uh, my best work out there. They hype me up and I could just concentrate on writing pitches and I could concentrate on actually creating the, the, the work. Um, and in exchange for, for them uh, hyping me up, if they got me work, they would get a commission. Uh, they would get some sort of kickback for finding and, and kind of closing the sale for me. So I don't know if there's a way to, and I don't know how, 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 uh, uh, what progress you are on your platform, but maybe there is some sort of way to put your work up for people to kind of hype for you in a, in a way to, to be a representative of your work, uh, of an artist's work so that they can kind of, kind of just concentrate on, doing uh, the work themselves and not having to, to go out and, 
and shield our work constantly. Uh, not that we're, we are doing that and not that we're not making authentic connections in spaces and Twitter and stuff, but sometimes, you know, it does feel like extra work uh, going out there and marketing yourself. So having a, a dedicated person or dedicated group or dedicated gallery that can represent your work in a fractionalized way and in, in a non-exclusive way could be a good way to kind of uh, alleviate some of the uh, responsibilities of, of selling and, and go back to creating. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Uh, Jeff, are you ready? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I, I completely agree with that as well. And um, I know I'm not like the best self promoter. And I just I would much rather just focus on, on making the work. Um, and so another thing is kind of onboarding people, collectors into the space, right? So if there was um, maybe a set of tools or videos to that would help, you know, collectors be able to, to come into the space and um, to be able to support the artists that they like. Um, I think that that could be helpful as well. Yeah, 100%, man. Uh, Nolan, got something to add? Um, yeah, I, I, it's, I don't know. I, I feel bad. I don't really know what to say about this question. Um, I, I don't really have an answer to that, I guess. That's okay. It's all good, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dude, you're all good. Totally good. Jack, you got something for us? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I honestly think Nosy said it all perfect, you know? If as creators, uh, we can focus on creating our work instead of uh, being, I, well, I feel like a lot of people are just so overwhelmed with like the marketing aspect and, you know, like shilling stuff because, you know, like I've, in the past few months I've seen, uh, like, for example, if, you, if you've been in the space, I'm sure you've seen like, uh, like a lot of like scams with it uh, saying like, I'm a collector at 20 ETH. Uh, I want to sp uh, like spend it on your work. Uh, so like shill your uh, like work down below uh, like in a subtweet or whatever, um, and then uh, if, I've seen a lot of people say, uh, you know, shilling is good if you do it correctly, not just like spam it on people's uh, under people's tweets uh, when it's unrelated. But I've also heard like people say uh, it's not that great to do, and you know, it just kind of um, uh, I, I guess just kind of. I, I, I don't know. It makes you like a less, less like serious creator, I guess. I, that's just the best way I can think to put that. Um, but I also think, uh, well, personally, I feel uh, I've been able to do pretty well in the space. Uh, I mean, I've only sold two NFTs, but uh, I still feel I've been able to like really build uh, somewhat of a community uh, with creators and collectors in the space so i feel like i've been pretty fortunate in that aspect but i feel like what would really help a lot of artists is more more concern over maybe the mental health of artists because uh i, I feel like a lot of people have expressed their uh discontent with how it's impacted their lives uh and you know in terms of mental health like physical health of uh, personally me uh, I sold uh, the, both the NFTs I sold in March. Um, after that, uh, I, I kind of like stopped going to the gym because I was like, I'm just going to focus on this one piece, you know, really grind it out, uh, try to get it finished. And at, at this point, honestly, I don't think that same piece I uh, started back in like April. I don't think I'm going to finish it for like, a two, like another two more months. So it's kind of messed up my schedule. But I feel like what would be really good to have and uh, – and you know to like really help and inspire creators is to do a lot to uh or do more to promote uh mental health uh in kind of that aspect where uh you know personally for me it's uh in maybe the i'd say the past two years uh i've been uh i, I kind of went into a period where i was like really critical about my work and the work i was putting out i was like almost scared to even like post anything on Twitter, uh, like before, before I was in NFTs, uh, it was challenging for me to accept the work I was creating and be all right with it. And I feel like almost uh, kind of as the NFT sales uh, dropped off a little bit, 
uh, in the past few months. Um, in terms of like minting work, uh, that's also increased, I guess, because uh, now it's like, um, yeah, you don't want, as an artist, I, you really, you wouldn't want to mint anything that's not going to sell because, or that you believe wouldn't sell because, um, you, you know, you're paying the minting and listing fees uh, and, you know, whatever. But I feel like uh, as artists, uh, there's a worry that we have that minting a work, uh, it may not sell. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people are really getting caught up in that aspect. And that's uh, one of the things uh, I, I like, I, I really focus on uh, throughout. And I think I mentioned earlier is just community building and, uh, you know, just strengthening the community that we already have. Uh, because I feel like that'd be a really powerful aspect uh, throughout the whole industry uh, and to really help and support creators. Yeah, man, I completely agree with you. Um, and for anyone looking for some cool resources for especially mental health stuff, um, Mala Vida has an amazing Discord group called Heal the Deal. And they do mental health checks. And basically, it's it's a community focused on mental health in the NFT space. A lot of amazing creators, a lot of amazing people and support in there. So highly recommend checking it out if you have a chance. Um, they they were on uh, our discussion a couple weeks ago when we were talking about mental health. And I know it's something that's super important for us and them. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, I would love to give an opportunity to Hellcat and Jose to maybe say a couple things. Um, I know they just joined us on the stage. So Hellcat, would you like to say something? Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for, I mean, just providing the space and being, you know, a supportive community. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with what Jack said about how there is pressure for artists to market, because I definitely feel like that's not really my strong suit at all. Um, but I definitely, like yesterday, um, I tweeted that I think there's room for space. I mean, there's space for artists to market the same way that collectible projects do. Like, you know how you see um, like Board a Yacht Club or um, other projects like that, and they have like a YouTube channel or a merch collection to go along with their roadmap. And I feel like for visual artists um, doing a roadmap, if you have like a cohesive series or like a cohesive body of work that you wanna do a drop for, then as you sell, you could also do um, little benchmarks like that. Like you could do a playlist on Spotify that like shows the vibe of your, of your work or um, do like an art print release or something like that in the same way that collectibles do but it could be um, more visually targeted. And I think that would be like a good way for us in the space to do content marketing. Or, you know, that could be like a good strategy that isn't so much just us shilling under people's tweets and just like, you know, struggling to figure out ways to sell our work. You know, uh, I, I actually wanna give Jose a chance to speak before I, I have a couple of things to say on that, but I'll let Jose speak first. Hey, everyone. I wanted to um, say that I agree with a lot of the points that everyone else has said with the trouble with like marketing your work. Um, it, it, it's a lot to just have a concept and sit down and work on it and then to have to market it and do all the shilling is really can be taxing. Um, as far as the collectibles, Recently, I, I was watching a YouTube channel and I realized that for a lot of the collectibles, it seems like the folks who buy them are more interested in flipping than they are necessarily like collecting long term as a as an art collector would. Um, and so if if there was, you know, platform or some kind of service that specialized in um, not just connecting artists to buyers, but like almost connecting them to qualified buyers. So people who are willing to um, invest in you long-term career as an artist, if there was some way to incentivize that, um, because I feel like be two different audiences, like the 
buyer slash investor type of type of like NFT collector who are they're only looking to make a profit versus the folks who are like art appreciators basically. Um, so I don't know. Maybe there's a way to to identify those collectors uh, because early on, a lot of the the folks that we see who constantly do sales, I think they establish their collector base within these DAOs and the, their own social token groups. And, you know, they had this advantage of being first and were able to kind of really get to know who the collectors were and, and the ones who would follow them throughout their the whole path. But I think um, because the space is so saturated, you know, it's kind of hard to find those those people who will do that with you. Yeah, those are those are really good points, Jose. And and just to add to to what everyone's been saying, um, yeah, uh, the the space is changing for sure. And I think what a lot of people came into the NFT space thinking is that you know you see all the headlines, you see all these creators, oftentimes like colleagues and friends, who came in and made like crazy amounts of money. Um, and immediately it became maybe not necessarily fully about the art, but a lot of it became about the money. And I think that's totally OK, because most of us as creators um, can't can't afford to support ourselves on our art yet. Or even if they were, it was it was uh, to a very small degree. And so a lot of people came into this space thinking they were all of a sudden going to make a ton of money and thrive off of NFTs. And what everyone failed to realize is this is just like any other industry or niche. Um, and it's going to only become more and more like every other niche. You know, typically creators, if they wanted to support themselves with their artwork, they had to hustle. They had to make art prints. They had to set up a website, an e-commerce shop, and do all sorts of like crazy, like business oriented stuff that normally they wouldn't think of if they were just making art. And that gradual progression leads to maybe you get a manager, maybe you get a, a gallerist to pick you up um, and manage you and do the heavy lifting of the marketing um, so you don't have to do that anymore. But it's a process that takes time. Um, it's definitely not a process where you pick up your brush and in six months you're rich and you're crushing it. Um, and I think a lot of people thought that coming into NFTs, it was going to be as simple as that. Um, but even the ones who are hyper successful, um, and made lots of money on it um, are even struggling now to actually generate sales. Um, and that's not to say that it won't boom again. It's not to say that it's it's not going to be something that everyone can fully support themselves doing. I think a lot of people need to readjust their frame and the way they look at this space. Um, there's huge, huge potential for people to monetize and make passive income from this space to support themselves and you don't necessarily have to be selling artwork for thousands of dollars um, i think it's all about now finding sustainable strategies to support yourself um, going into the future because you have to think of it like if tomorrow the market dried up and people were no longer going to be spending thousands of dollars on a one of one nft which Let's just take this uh, into perspective for a second. I know artists who make fine art and paintings, and their original paintings that they're selling NFTs of sell for less than the NFTs are selling for. Um, so that's a red flag to me. Um, and basically what it says is a lot of this is fueled by money and finance and people who are super speculators. Um, and to an extent, you also don't want to have collectors who are hyper speculators because that just means you're kind of getting into bed with people who are going to be expecting you to keep a certain standard to your work, whether that's scarcity, whether that's like making them money, but there's different motives. Um, and so, I mean, I could go on a rant for days about this stuff, but, but in short, what I would encourage everyone to think about is how do you include this as an extension of your art brand? Um, how are you marketing to your loyal fans who have been following you on Instagram for years and allowing them to own your artwork, participate, engage with you, grant, get like added experiences from you. Um, and a lot of people aren't doing that in this space. There's like the separation between the Instagram crowd and the new Twitter crypto only people. 
Um, but it's a super limited focus. And I think a lot of people need to broaden their looks and hopefully at least some of the tools that we'll be releasing, some of the new platforms that will be coming out um, will facilitate bridging those audiences together and actually help creators find sustainable income streams going forward. And I know we are at our hour. Um, we can probably go a little bit longer if uh, our lovely speakers would like to continue talking. Um, maybe this is a good time um, for any, any of our speakers to maybe ask additional questions, uh, maybe talk about some things that they've had on their mind this week. Um, I know we've kind of gone over a lot this week, <laughs> or today, sorry. Um, so I would love to hear if there's anything else uh, anyone has to say. I just wanted to um, kind of build on what you're saying, Kyle. I think it's super interesting to kind of examine the the tie-in of crypto as, as a DeFi mechanism um, versus the art aspect of it. And, you know, is it even desirable to, to decouple those? Like you were saying earlier, I mean, if, if it is very hyper-speculative, um, then how much of the art is being shaped around the desires of the collectors? And how much is it necessarily being compromised in that respect um, versus just like the pure artist who just has a message for the world and, you know, people appreciating that and wanting to participate in that, that message and crafting the story. Um, I, I think you're right about, you know, seeing, filling the gap of you know, onboarding um, your super fans into the, into the crypto world as a way of facilitating uh, deeper conversations with with the artists and possibly like more interesting collaborations can emerge um, through those mechanisms. And just like I really like how I think um, some of the um, ways that these drops have been structured in, in different tiers where you can kind of um, gamify the experience of interacting with with the original creator of the art. And um, I'm just excited to to play in that space and to see what we can all come up with. Sure, you guys have heard uh, like a lot of these scams are going around like with the uh, like people like DMing you a link or something and uh, I think what it does it like downloads like a file or like some type of key log or something to your computer and uh, it can potentially compromise like uh, your wallets and stuff uh, and like I've seen uh, some friends that I know in the space like lose like 10 to 20 ETH in their wallet that they've been that they've been building since they started out in the space and you know it's it's a really tough thing to see uh because i believe everyone in the space um you know i think we're all really hard working and many of us are re just really motivated and you know intrigued by this uh by this like whole new idea and this new concept uh well at least to me it was uh like re really new to me when i entered the space but i'm curious uh what your guys's experience has been with like some of these scams um and yeah stuff like that i don't know i think i think it just needs to be it needs to be said more that if you have lots of crypto it should be on a hardware wallet because it, it's safe there i mean that's where like, like 98% of my crypto is. I only ever really leave like enough to mint and list a couple pieces in my wallet. So in case that did happen, um, yeah, just the best way to avoid that is to have like a ledger pretty much. Yep. I definitely completely agree with Nolan. You need a, if you're serious about crypto and stuff, you should invest in a hardware wallet. It is definitely necessary. It's another thing to learn, but I think educating yourself is one of the most important things you can do in this space. Well, yeah, and like just um, educating yourself about crypto in general. Um, 
I know like for a couple of my friends, they weren't into cryptocurrency until NFTs. So they weren't used to it, like the price fluctuating and everything. But like, like for me, I guess, and I, anyone who's been into crypto for like a while now, like you're, you're used to the price going up and down. And I remember like Ethereum was at an all time high a couple months ago. And then, you know, it, it went down to almost like half that price. And a lot of people were like worried and like scared, like, should I keep doing this as it like, should I go back to my job and like stuff like that. And so it's just like, it's good to inform yourself on the volatility of some of these currencies and, while like i totally believe in them and like i think ethereum is going to go back up again in my opinion but it's good to like remember that it can go down and like if it does you need to have like a plan b i wouldn't put like i wouldn't put all of your holdings on and your plans in life on this because it can be really volatile yep I definitely agree. And especially for people trying to support themselves doing this stuff, it's always important to set rules and take profit so that you can feed yourself and eat. Um, it's great to make all the monies and we're going to the moon, but it's also equally as important to know when it's time to bow out and take some profit so you can eat three meals a day. Um, so whether that's 50, 50, holding half of your money in Ethereum and cashing the other half out as soon as you make a sale or figuring out some sort of other rule for yourself, is just important as, as a creator and as someone who's essentially becoming a, an investor to, to be mindful of your funds and only do this within your means. I, um, I think you said it best when you said take profits. Um, I, there's no such thing as making all the money. I learned that early um, when I first started investing. You lose a lot trying to make all of the money. Um, I think you should have an exit plan before you even start thinking about investing. Um, you know, investing is a hard thing. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of grit because things do go up and down no matter what investments you make. Um, but you got to have an exit plan. You got to be thinking about how are you, like he said, how are you going to eat today? Um, you know, and understand that that this is most investments are long term things. Um, yeah, crypto looks so good because it goes up so fast, but it can also go down so fast. So just to just to protect yourself, you gotta yeah, the the uh, advice about a hard wallet, um, and uh, just just being a little bit smarter too. I think that in this day and age, we gotta stop opening these emails. I I just talked to somebody who lost like two point five ETH, and I was just like. Too like you know he he opened the email he wasn't supposed to the it had a link, um and then it, this guy like the link took him to his wallet and he did something else even more stupid like dude you you're in your wallet you know you don't know this person you can't you can't just be giving people access to your wallet it's like somebody asked me to send them my wallet the other day I think it was my boy Plug I don't think he's in here but uh Plug asked me that and I think uh altered altered motion told him yo man why are you asking for this right you should always be asking those questions before you decide to send anybody anything why are you asking for this um for me um if i send somebody my wallet thing that i don't know like that i create a new wallet right they have plenty of ways for you to create new wallets especially like um what is that metamask metamask you could just create wallets over and over and over again you know so just just be cautious man and, and really think about what you're doing before you do it yeah. And, and just to add to that too, because I know probably a lot of the people in here are not sleeping much. They're working crazy hours. They're totally hyped up on this crypto stuff, which never shuts off and never the markets never close. Um, do not be doing crypto stuff when you're tired at like two in the morning, because that's when all the mistakes get made. That's when you open the email with the link or X person wrote you and they're welcoming you to their exhibition in wherever in the world. And they're so excited to have you and to please download this file. Like, please always make sure you're checking what type of file you're downloading. Always be cautious. Uh, it totally sucks, but 
this is this is part of taking back your ownership of your finances and control of your art and control of all of the stuff we're doing in blockchain. Um, it comes with added risk. So just be mindful and always uh, be on the side of caution. You know, just because someone is being super friendly doesn't mean they have your best interests at heart. So just always be safe and get a hardware wallet. And don't be trading at four in the morning. For real, I, I just want to jump on your point for that because that's when I make the most mistakes when I'm exhausted and I'm trying to look at look at crypto and look at charts and stuff like that. That is a, a straight no go. He is absolutely right. When you're too exhausted to look at the numbers, don't do it. You know, um, wait till the morning. I know sometimes we miss things and things go up. And it, but like I said, you never make all of the money. It's better to be safe than sorry, um, because those those losses, they tend to get people away from these spaces. Right. We tend to say, hey, we took this loss. We're not doing this no more. Don't don't do that to yourself. You have plenty of room to get these W's. You just got to be smart about what you're doing. And and. Talk to the people in these communities because these people have a lot of great knowledge and they can help you protect yourself. I think um, the community, it's our job to really be out there for the people that just don't know certain things and kind of like, you know, not necessarily holding their hand, but watching their back too, you know, because we're all one community. We got to watch each other's back and we're growing together. So that's how we got to do it. Yep, I 100% agree. And just to wrap up this this train of thought, um, you know, the best thing that any creator can do outside of crypto in crypto is educate themselves, because at the end of the day, we're all entrepreneurs and we're all to some capacity dealing with business related things. Um, so it's important to educate yourself and just even simple uh, methodologies, rules like basic info on finances and stuff is so important and so applicable to the space. Like, please go get an awesome book that I recommend. It's called I Will Teach You How to Be Rich. I'm sure the title alone will get all of you interested. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad's also another really great one. It just talks about basic finances, accounting, like how to set up your budgets, like especially as creators. This is so, so important. I highly recommend everyone take a look at them. They're really easy to read, understand and digest. It's awesome. And a lot of the stuff will help you in a lot of the things you do in the crypto space. Um, I know we have, uh, we're a little bit over time. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts we have before I mention some closing remarks? Can I, can I say something on the, uh, first of all, those two books were great book choices. I also, I'm, I'm going to say there's a book by Grant Sabier. I believe it's called um, Financial Freedom, right? This guy breaks down um, not money, but time in a different way. It, it really changed my life on how I think about money. And um, he really, really breaks down how much time you have to spend to make a certain amount of money and how when you think about it like that, it's harder to, it's harder to spend that money. You know, um, so I suggest that too. Um, and those are two great book choices. Nothing else to say, bro. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be on the stage, man. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thank you for adding such awesome insights. And thank you to all of our speakers who joined us today. You're all awesome. Everyone in the crowd, please give everyone a follow. If you're creators, help one another out, like talk to each other, make friends, like create communities, do what you're going to do. You're all kind of in this fight together. Um, it's a journey and it's it's great when you have people supporting you and helping you along the way. Um, just a couple things I just want to close with. We do have our Origins exhibition happening right now. Um, I know we talked a lot earlier about evening the playing field, making things accessible. Um, this is our platform's first exhibition we're going to be curating. Um, we're asking people to submit a piece of artwork that hasn't been minted before that aligns with the theme Origins. Um, basically, we're going to have an external panel of judges from our external community. We're going to be judging all the artworks just based on the visual art piece itself. No names, no social handles, et cetera. Um, we really want to make this as accessible and open to the community as possible because we all know how valuable it would be to be one of the first ones on a platform when it launches. It's added visibility. It's added um, like uh, cross-promotion between us and, and your work. 
Um, so it's a great opportunity for creators who are trying to get started in this space. Um, additionally, we're going to be giving out a bunch of drawing tablets and a creator laptop as well. And all entrants are going to get a NFT Genesis pack uh, that we're, we're going to be issuing to all the people who submit their work. So if anyone's interested in that, please hit me up. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, you can hit us up at any time. Um, we're super excited to be launching next month. Um, and we appreciate all of your support thus far. Please join us on Discord. We have these conversations every week on Twitter. We have happy hour and office hours on Friday. Um, pop in, ask questions, introduce yourself, share your art, please. Um, I know you all like shilling your art on Twitter threads, but come in, share your art. We would love to see it, and I'm sure the community would love to see it as well. So thanks again for everyone who tuned in, and we look forward to seeing you all very soon. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you guys. Thanks, bro. Thanks so much. Later, everyone.